Hello, and welcome to Virtual Investor Conferences. My name is Matt Leteplo, and on behalf of OTC Markets, we're very pleased you have joined us for our next live presentation from Metallic Minerals Corp, a North American exploration and development company focused on copper, silver, gold, and other critical minerals. Please note, you can submit questions in the box to the left of the slides. You can also view a company's availability for one-on-one -on -one meetings through the Schedule Meetings tab found on the conference platform. At this point, I'm very pleased to welcome Scott Petzl, president of Metallic Minerals Corp, which trades on the OTCQB venture market under the symbol MMNGF and on the TSXV under the symbol MMG. Welcome, Scott. Thank you, Matt. Again, my name is Scott Petzl. I'm president of Metallic Minerals. We're here today to talk about Metallic Minerals Corporation, which is a resource stage company with uh, resource stage exploration and development company with three key assets in North America. And I'm excited to talk to you about those today. So thank you for being here. And we will advance just to begin talking a, a bit more about those projects. But before I do, I want to say I may be making forward looking statements and to use caution and to do your own re research. Uh, you've just heard from Stillwater Critical Minerals, and I want to point out that Metallic Minerals and Stillwater Critical Minerals, as well as Granite Creek Copper, are part of the Metallic Group, which is a collaboration of independently traded exploration companies that shares a common approach and strategy to business and project development. We also share back office expenses to keep the expenses of each of these companies low, uh, to minimize our, our need to raise additional funds when, uh, when necessary. Another thing I'll mention before we get started reviewing our projects in more detail is the fact that, as I mentioned, Metallic is a resource stage company. The slide that you see here is the Lasan curve, which I think is familiar to many people in the industry. Uh, as a resource stage company, we're at the optimal entry point for investors that are inter interested in seeing value creation uh, from our activities in developing these resources and growing these resources significantly from this point forward. So with that, I want to talk a bit more about our three key assets. And again, I think these key assets are really well positioned as resource stage projects help contribute to the growth of the clean energy transition with a domestic US or North American source of these metals. Our three key assets are the La Plata project in southwestern Colorado, which is a, a copper, silver, gold porphyry system that hasn't been explored in over 50 years. Our most recent news release on the La Plata project was a resource update where we announced 1.2 billion pounds of copper as an inferred resource with 17.6 million ounces of silver. And we're currently drilling on this project to follow up on a very high grade hit from last year at uh, hole 2204 that ran 816 meters of 0.41% copper equivalent recovered that ended in extreme high grade. And we're underway on, a, on this phase one program that has been in part funded by interest from Newcrest as a result of those high grade hits in this uh, starter resource or inaugural resource that we announced in April of last year. Our second key project is our Kino Silver project in the north central part of the Yukon territories where we're advancing a high grade silver lead zinc project towards a resource announcement within uh, the end or before the end of 2023. Uh, it's a 100% owned project. Our brownfield neighbor in the district is Hecla, who is restarting operations at what were the former holdings of Alexco Resources that they acquired in September of 2022. They're working towards nameplate or full production by the end of this year. And we, uh, again, are working towards announcing this resource before the end of 2023, but we're also exploring on 40 different targets, 11 of which we have returned significant drill results and five of which are going to be included in this inaugural resource for the project 
uh, coming up very shortly. Our third key asset is really a revenue generator. That's our Klondike alluvial production portfolio. Some of you may be familiar with Parker Schnabel of the hit show Gold Rush on the uh, Discovery Channel. There's uh, he's now initiated production from ground that we own that we will re receive a 10 to 15 percent royalty from and his projection I think at this point in time is 2,500 to 5,000 ounces following a, a late start in the spring due to due to weather considerations but a really good starter for year for us with an opportunity or an upside to produce 10,000 ounces that we'll retain in future seasons uh, from um, the 10 to 15 percent royalty on that production uh, as income to help offset uh, our back office costs or supplement our exploration costs as we move forward. Let's dig in a little bit more. Our La Plata project, our copper, silver, gold PGE project in the southwestern corner of Colorado. Again, we just within the last month updated our 43101 resource estimate. Uh, this is a picture of the La Plata Mountains in the background and the resource area is down to the lower right side of the, of the picture, but we see a lot of exploration uh, potential for new discovery across the project. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. The key things that's happened in this year is the announcement of Newcrest's strategic investment, which was announced in May of 2023. They took a 9.5% uh, equity position with, um, with their investment, which netted us $6.3 million, which is largely focused on exploration at La Plata and comes with an additional warrant at 55 cents that is available for three years and could bring in additional funds. Um, we are utilizing that funding right now on this first phase drill program, but I think it should be important to step back just briefly and, and look at the history of the project and think about how all this has come about, which we'll do in just a second. So this map shows our location in the Western US. The project is located in Colorado, which was recently ranked fifth in terms of global investment attractiveness on a survey by the Fraser Institute of Mining CEOs. So we think it's a really good jurisdiction to be working in. We've had great support so far on the project and you know, a testament to our ability to have success is to look at the fact that Newmont is headquartered in Denver. Newmont has one of the largest gold operations in the world at Cripple Creek with a mining on 30 million ounces of gold resources. And then Freeport McMoran with their molly deposits at henderson and climax so it's a very active state a very active region and a well mineralized uh, endowment there in, in colorado as well and largely at the intersection of these two continental scale structures that we see outlined in green on uh, on the map here which really tend to put us in a really good spot for additional discovery and a, a good plumbing system for for the copper porphyry system that we have been exploring. Again, this is a copper porphyry system. It's a subtype of porphyry deposits called an alkalic porphyry deposit, which are typically very rich in precious metal content and have the potential to be a very large scale tier one assets. Typically, these deposits are the economic engines for some of these major miners. And we see here on the list, Freeport, Rio, Newcrest, Tech Newmont. Uh, our company, our CEO, Greg Johnson and myself, uh, demonstrated a lot of value creation through our work as part of the co-founding team for Nova Gold Resources back in the 2000s, where we worked on Glore Creek, worked and developed on uh, Glore Creek, which is now a 13 billion pound resource with 11 million ounces of gold and over 200 million ounces of silver. And we think that's a, a, a relatively near term analog for what we can do with our project here at La Plata. And is also the reason why Newcrest really became involved or interested 
in this project is there are two projects at Cadia Ridgeway. Uh, also, their project at Red Chris in Northern BC are really uh, very close and not uh, analogs to our La Plata project. And, and they see the scale potential and wanted to get in early and help support the exploration of the project with the idea that it has legs or room to grow. And so we're excited to have them as a partner and we're excited to be working on this first phase drill program. I'll just step back and say mineralization was discovered in the 1700s by the Spanish explorers and mined intermittently on a high grade gold, silver, and telluride. Telluride is a, a critical mineral used commonly in the, in the solar industry. They mined on these gold, silver, telluride veins from 1850 to the 1940s. The War Powers Act in the United States shut these mines down. Subsequently, the majors came in and recognized copper in the district. So Rio Tinto and Freeport McMoran's progenitors uh, got into a staking rush in the district and began to do exploration in what is known as the Allard area, which is our primary resource area at this point in time. You can see on this map a mixture of uh, historic drill holes and newer holes. A couple of holes that were drilled to uh, confirm the historic drilling and were the uh, foundation for this historic or inaugural resource announcement in April of 2022. Subsequent to that resource announcement, uh, we drilled hole 2204 and 2203 to test extensions of the mineralization. And we found significant high grade in 2204, as I mentioned, over 816 meters of continuous mineralization. The last 29 meters was over a percent and a half. And I think what's significant here from a critical minerals perspective is 1.3 gram per ton gold plus PGE mineralization. Uh, we had at the end of the hole, which ended in mineralization, platinum grades above five grams and palladium grade grades above five grams, which is really unheard of for uh, a system of, of this type. Uh, just to mention uh, another cross-section view of hole 2204 and the high grade is shown here in a 0.4% copper equivalent grade shell. Gives you an idea of the nature of the ore body, which we envision would be mined as a block cave operation from underground, something that Newcrest has significant experience in with their projects, both in Australia and British Columbia. And that we are currently showing uh, the trace of our current drill program. We just completed 2205 to test offsets of this mineralization and to see if we can grow that high grade resource with the idea of identifying close to 100, uh, 50 to 150 million tons of higher grade material at depth in the Allard resource area. Uh, another time here to remind you that after Rio Tinto and Freeport, which had very limited land positions based on sort of the staking rush of the 50s, um, Exit, they exited the district in the 19, late 1970s. And so there really hasn't been any modern exploration done in the district for over 50 years. And we uh, have been very systematic in our exploration efforts, identifying uh, both new targets, up to 16 new targets across the project, but I think it's key to say that the Allard resource and the last two maps that you've seen are really focused in this area shown in the red highlighted ground and surrounded by the alteration footprint of the porphyry intrusion system where we have outcropping mineralization at multi-percent copper with trace PGE mineralization on the backside of this ridge a kilometer to two kilometers away as well as other target areas that uh, we're very interested in, in producing. So not only do we see the ability to quickly grow the resource in the Allard area on our La Plata project, but also to continue to make new discoveries and advance this project in a jurisdiction that we're 
very proud to be working in with a partner that we're very proud to be working with. Uh, the overall resource number, 147 million tons currently at a 0.25% copper equivalent cutoff for uh, a combined 1.317 billion pounds of copper equivalent in the, in the resource, which again, I think we can quickly uh, expand with not only our phase one drilling, but uh, drilling over the next several years. In terms of critical minerals, not only is copper in our minds a, a critical mineral uh, to help in this transition to the green energy economy and, and rewiring the grid to be able to deliver electric power in, in places and amounts that it hasn't previously seen, but um, we have this platinum group element that we've identified in the drilling that I think will be a significant part of our exploration activities going forward. We're also seeing anomalous uh, rare earth elements that have not previously been sampled for and the tellurium component in the high grade veins which surround the porphyry system are also a potential target for uh, exploration, discovery and development in future programs. So I just want to also uh, talk about a uh, the development of the concept of critical minerals and the work that the U USGS is doing in the La Plata district to further define the possibility of critical mineral development in, uh, in the United States to address these supply chain issues and current tensions uh, globally with, with other superpowers. So the USGS is funded up to $300,000 of work to map and study critical mineral potential, as well as to complete uh, airborne geophysical surveys in the district. And, and the Colorado Geological Survey is carrying that out. And we're working in conjunction with them as, as best we can to help facilitate their work, which will in the end facilitate our work and our ability to make discoveries. We're also doing that with gold spot. So we're using the highest level of technology available in our targeting, in our systematic process to explore and develop the project. So I wanna talk briefly about our Kino Silver project, our second key asset where we're expecting to announce our inaugural 43101 resource before the end of 2023. Uh, it is in the north central part of the Yukon, which again, we think is one of the better jurisdictions to be working in. And that's borne out by the number of companies that are in the district currently doing exploration or doing mining and developing projects as we go. And again, our Brownfields neighbor, Hecla Mining Corporation, which is actively trying to grow uh, or restart to nameplate production by the end of 2023. This is a picture of their mill site on the project. It is a fairly small mill, four to 500 tons per day, but the key point is it's extremely high grade. Uh, it's one of the highest grade districts in the world. And uh, this is demonstrated in this slide here in terms of comparisons with global primary silver producing peers it is uh, one of the highest silver grade districts in the world. It is also in one of the lower political risk jurisdictions in the world. So when you combine those two things, it's a district you, you need to be a part of and, uh, and pay attention to. And I think Heckler's work of late has been really good to update the profile of the project and the district. And we look forward to uh, advancing our resources too to a various uh, uh, level of interest for not only Hecla, but other parties. Just a, a quick oversight here, the Kino Silver District, 35 kilometers across, historic producers are shown in orange, current resources held by Hecla, uh, whose property is in green, are shown in yellow. The Kino Mill Complex sits here in the little blue dot and metallic minerals property is here in orange with the names of various target areas shown in blue and our resource areas shown within the red circles that we'll be announcing before the end of the year. Um, 
Formo, one of our highest grade targets, I'll point out, uh, is also one of the largest resources that are pending. And uh, it is cut by the Silver Trail Highway, which accesses the mill. It's three and a half kilometers from the mill and, um, and has power across the corner of the project. So we think this is a really interesting project as an in-holding within the HECLA that could quickly have the ability to be developed and advanced uh, as we go forward. Out of Fox, we're working on new discoveries. This is a new discovery that we made in 2022. It's a slightly different type of mineralization uh, or morphology of mineralization. It is a sheeted vein deposit up to 177 meters wide that uh, will have the ability or is more amenable to open pit style of mining. And we think that is significant as open pit mining at surface uh, is a much cheaper development cost than the traditional or typical mining style that's been done across the district where underground high grade operations are existing and where uh, HECLA is working to explore and develop at depth new targets at Birmingham and, and Flame and Maw. So cheaper development cost, near surface resources with underground or open pit opportunities. And, uh, and we're excited about the Kino project as well as, uh, as our uh, project in Colorado. The um, third key asset that I'll mention is our revenue royalty generator. It's our production royalty from um, our Klondike alluvial gold portfolio. This is a picture of uh, Parker Schnabel with Little Flake Mining, again from Discovery Channel's Gold Rush show. We were up visiting with him on his operation as he began work on our ground where we'll retain that 10 to 15% royalty. And he told us and showed us a picture that this was one of the top five best pans of his career. He's young. He's only a 30-year-old guy, but, um, but for his accomplished as he is to say that this pan was one of the top five and that it came from our ground uh, got us excited about what the potential is and, and him as well. So we're seeing that production now uh, and again with the goal of uh, a probably 2,500 to 5,000 ounces of production this year. Um, and just to give you a quick overview, 20 million ounces in north northern part of the Yukon or Klondike Gold District near Dawson City, uh, historically 20 million ounces mined from areas in yellow. Parker was previously here on the Indian River, which is the most productive part of the district. The um, part that's leased is this first five mile section of ground on our Australia Creek claims, where we're working to advance uh, and have the potential to add an additional 10 operators so this is really expandable portfolio for us. And this is just one section of an area that uh, we have claims, alluvial claims in the Klondike that we're working actively to identify and place qualified operators to increase that revenue flow to Metallic. Just a couple of things that have happened of late. We announced our 9.5% Newcrest strategic investment. Uh, we updated our La Plata resource within the last couple of weeks, and we're expecting as catalyst moving forward a 20 uh, announcement on further 2023 exploration programs at Kino. We're underway at our La Plata project and should have results back by, uh, by sometime this fall. And our, um, we're hopeful that we can announce a additional alluvial production royalty agreements with qualified operators. And we're looking to have um, our inaugural Kino 43101 resource announced before the end of 2023. So a quick look at our capital structure. 
Um, our recent share price of 37 cents, but essentially a $58 million market cap company with 167 million shares issued and outstanding. And I think uh, this is a, we all know the market conditions out there currently, but I feel like for what we've developed, what we've advanced, what we brought to the table, we're well undervalued. Uh, I'm sure all junior companies are saying that right now, but we have a strong shareholder base and we're committed to moving forward and advancing these projects and, and, uh, and creating additional shareholder value and trying to get back to that uh, dollar plus share price that we were at in uh, late 2020 prior to the pandemic where um, we hadn't advanced or announced any resources on any projects at that point uh, and had just acquired our La Plata project. So uh, management well vested, 17% uh, with our associates, nine and a half for, for Newcrest, 14.5% for Eric Sprott. And uh, I think we're again, well situated with key assets that could become tier one properties for majors. And, uh, and we're really interested in continuing the work that we're doing and continuing to provide news to the market. Uh, I'm going to take a few questions now. And uh, one, uh, one first question that I will answer is uh, whether or not uh, is the plan to continue with two main projects or are there thoughts on breaking one out? Well, at the moment, we see both of these assets are different in terms of how you might value them, but they are both tier one assets in their class or potential tier one assets in their class. So for now, we're continuing to move in parallel and provide a relative uh, you know, a valuation for each project and attention to each project as we advance them towards an unknown future, really. We're gonna continue to build value with resource addition on these projects to maximize value to our shareholders before we, we take any other steps. Uh, second question, is the Klondike in production? And if not, when? So with our portfolio royalty, um, a royalty portfolio package in alluvial claims, Parker Schnabel is in production currently. He's just started within the last month. So we are starting to see revenue flow from that operation, but he's our primary operator. We have a lot of room to explore and advance uh, or extend the, uh, um, the royalty by adding additional operators. And that is something that we will continue to work on trying to do. Uh, next question is until when can we drill at La Plata? Well, our, our interest right now is, you know, to get the first 5,000 meters of phase one done and then look at a second phase to follow up on the results of phase one and perhaps test additional targets. We are in the mountains at, um, roughly nine to 10,000 feet in elevation. So a winter does come eventually, but. We're in southwestern Colorado. It's generally a, a dry climate, and we envision the ability to be able to uh, drill into November with the exception of, um, you know, early heavy winter storms that may or may, may not limit us. But certainly through October and into early November. Uh, let's see. Next question. La Plata is on a mountain. Won't that make it challenging to mine? Well, uh, as we envision La Plata as a block cave operation, so it's largely an underground operation. And because it is actually elevated on a ridge line, uh, there are opportunities to come in underneath it from the valleys on either side and access uh, low down in that ore body and then mine up in this block cave scenario. So we're actually uh, excited about the configuration of the resource at the Allard area now, as opposed to, um, say, um, you know, having it down at the bottom of the valley where we've got to spiral down to get underneath it. So we're, we're quite excited about that, but it's a long ways away from sort of generating, um, you know, 
economic concepts of how to extract minerals at that at that project. We'll continue to work on trying to build the resource and let the resource tell the story of what it's going to look like in the end. Um, I think that's it for time, and uh, I appreciate all of your questions, and thank you very much.